today we are going to see uh, deep feed forward networks <coughs> so deep feed forward networks they are also called as feed forward neural networks or multi layer perceptrons mlps are the quintessential deep learning model okay so when we consider deep learning uh, models this this is the this feed forward networks are the uh, very essential thing <coughs> and we normally call them as neural networks the basic component in this network is a perceptron and there are multiple perceptrons in it so we call it as a multi-layer perceptron we will see the architecture also the uh, goal of the feed forward network is to approximate some function f star okay so using these networks we are going to uh, find out the approximation for a uh, function uh, a feed forward network defines a mapping uh, y is equal to f of x theta so f is the function we we have to learn y is the uh, output and learn the value of the parameter as theta that results in the best function approximation so x is the input to the function and theta is the parameter we have to learn to get the best approximation uh, these models are called feed forward okay this is deep feed forward network and why they call as uh, feed forward because information flows through the function being evaluated from x through the intermediate computations used to define f and finally to the output y so the uh, information pass from the input to the output okay and uh, through the intermediate computations so, so it is in forward direction so these are called feed forward networks there are no feedback connections in which outputs of the model are fed back to itself so, there is no feedbacking system so it's uh, it's always feeding forward when feed forward and neural networks are extended to include feedback connections they are called recurrent neural network that they are another kind of neural networks uh, and when you uh, consider a, a feed forward network so this is the simplest feed forward network with the one unit or one neuron in it or we call it as a perceptron the circle is called as a perceptron <coughs> okay so this is the very basic unit in any neural network so this is actually representing some computations and x1 x2 x3 are the input to this uh, unit okay to the perceptron uh, x1 x2 x3 and the it, it, uh, cal it does some calculations and computations and it gives you the output okay so this single perceptron is uh, can also do some uh, approximations uh, of the function but it fails uh, for some um, other kind of uh, functions for example if we ask a single perceptron to evaluate uh, the xor function it is not able to do that okay so um, for that so in uh, this single perceptron cannot approximate all the functions or it cannot do uh, some kind of computations in that case we go for multi-layer perceptrons so single perceptron cannot do some things some uh, functions so we go for um, multi-layer perceptrons mlps so this is a multi-layer perceptron and uh, or we can call uh, this as a structure of a deep feed forward network okay so these circles are uh, the uh, neurons or we can call them as uh, the perceptrons okay and um, there are many perceptrons in this uh, network and these are called this each vertical uh, layers are called they are called layers okay and the first one is the layer where we give the input so they are called as the input layers we give the input like x1 x2 x3 etc so they are input layers and where we get the output or the last layer is called the output layer okay so we have input layer and output layer and in between these two layers in between input layer and output layer there can be different layers and these layers are called hidden layers 
okay so in this example we have two hidden layers and when you take uh, uh, the input layer there are uh, actually six uh, perceptrons are there six units are there and in the first hidden layer we have four units and in the second hidden layer we have three units and in the output layer we have only one uh, unit okay the, the structure may be different okay the, the, in all the feed forward networks we are not following the same structure there are the number of layers and the number of neurons in each layer will be different for different uh, architectures okay and uh, when you check this neuron you can see that this neuron is connected to all the neurons in the next layer okay it is connected to this one this one and uh, this one and this last one and when you take this neuron it is connected to all the neurons in the next layer okay and one more thing none of the neurons are connected to the neurons in the same layer that also we should observe okay when you take this neuron it is not connected to any of the other five neurons in this layer and when you take this neuron it is not connected to any of the neurons in the same layer okay it is same for all the layers and since this layer is every neuron in this layer is connected to every neuron in the next layer we call them as fully connected networks okay so you can take any neuron it is connected to all the neurons in the next layer okay that is the thing and uh, the layers inside uh, between input layer and output layer are called the hidden layers and uh, uh, when you represent it as a function this f of x is representing the output or f of x is the function we have to approximate it can be represented this x is the input that we give in the input layer so um, uh, this output uh, output is f of x okay output is uh, output is y or uh, 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 it can be represented as f of, f of x and this uh, f of x is uh, represented as a series of functions okay it's a composition of functions it is uh, uh, f1 uh, we take f1 of x okay x is the input input we give in this layer so this is x1 x2 like that x2 x3 x4 x5 we have six inputs in this example okay so we will find out f1 of x so f1 is representing this layer then the output of this layer is given as an input for the next layer f2 so it is f2 of f1 of x okay and uh, there is some calculations in this layer and the output of this f2 is given as an input for f1 uh, sorry f3 so f3 of f2 of f1 of x okay and from this uh, we calculate this f3 will calculate the function uh, it will be uh, okay there is f4 also f4 and the output of f3 is given as an input to f4 and f4 will finally calculate the value of y okay it, it goes like that and uh, this the number of layers we call it as a, the depth of the network it is the term uh, we usually use depth and even this uh, deep the word uh, deep also comes uh, from this uh, concept depth so the number of layers in the network is called the depth and um, uh, the number of neurons in each layer is called the width of the network number of neurons in each layer is called the width of the network okay and when uh, the number of hidden layers so, so that there may be only one hidden layer in the network or there there may be more than one uh, layers in the network so if the number of hidden layers are greater than one we call it as a deep neural network okay so the deep neural network is the network which has more than one hidden layers so this this network is uh, can be uh, called as a deep neural network since it has two hidden layers okay this is hidden layer one and this is hidden layer two 
and when you take a, a very perceptron in the network um, you can see that there are two computations two functions here one is a sigma function that will find out uh, the uh, weighted sum of the inputs weighted sum of the inputs so it has uh, uh, x1 x2 uh, x3 etc s6 it has if it has some uh, these inputs it will find uh, the weighted sum of these x uh, these input values okay so we have a, a wx a w into x weight and sum we will, uh, into weight into the uh, input we calculate and there is another part called the activation function okay this uh, weighted sum is applied to an activation function to get the output from each uh, perceptron and finally we will get uh, we'll transform our input vectors to and output vectors okay then um, uh, these uh, networks these deep fluid verb networks are called neural or uh, that means we call them as neural networks as well um, uh, why we call uh, them as neural because they are loosely inspired by the neuroscience or uh, how this the neurons in our body is working each hidden layer of the network is typically a vector value okay it's not a, a single value they are vector value the dimensionality of these hidden layers determine the width of the uh, model width is the the number of um, and number of neurons in the uh, hidden layer and then um, uh, when we talk about the linear models and why we go for this deep network means when we use linear models the linear models can represent only um, linear functions like a linear regression and um, um, <coughs> logistic regression and all we we go for uh, in, in those things we use only linear models and the linear models can represent only linear functions and the model uh, this linear model cannot understand the interaction between any two input variables okay that is my one major disadvantage of this linear models to extend linear models to represent non-linear functions of x we can apply the linear model not to uh, x itself but to the transformed input phi of x okay so um, this uh, li no, we can implement non-linear functions um, by using an intermediate function called phi phi okay so we find out uh, the function phi of x and uh, this this will give you a, a non-linear uh, uh, function and then apply a, okay this phi is the non-linear transformation to x and after this transformation we can apply a linear transformation the question is uh, then how to choose the mapping phi okay the strategy of deep learning is to learn the phi okay so we are not uh, uh, choosing any function as phi instead uh, the neural network has to learn this phi okay so in this approach we have a model y is equal to f of x theta w so in this function we have the input x then theta and w w is the weight or in the network okay then it is uh, represented as uh, the non-linear transformation phi of x theta into w so it is represented as a uh, function of uh, phi and uh, uh, multiplied with the w now we have the parameter theta that we use to learn phi from the broad class of functions and parameter w that maps phi of x to the desired output. Okay, so phi will capture the non-linearity of our function and the output of the function output will be obtained by multiplying it with a w. 
This is an example of deep feed powerful network with the five defining the hidden layer. So in this example, this non-linearity have been introduced using this hidden layers. That means the phi is calculated by the hidden layers. In this approach, we parameterize the representation as phi of x theta and use the optimization algorithm to find theta that correspond with good representation or good approximation. Okay, that is all about the feed forward uh, network.